Hello, hello, eventually. <laughs> hello, everyone. This is Alex Koloskov from 4TG.com. Today uh, is that another special Friday where we go to, uh, to you with Friday Photo Talk. And uh, it's again special Friday because we couldn't do it right away at 1 p.m. Pacific time where it's supposed to be. Uh, well, karma, I guess. Anyway, right now we are online. And I'm glad to see that, uh, well, we have many people still waiting. And uh, I always appreciate your support, okay? Because uh, we're coming up late. So, uh, let me open the chat and uh, I'll tell you what will be going on. Uh, John, uh, Philip, Fida, Thomas, uh, Susan, Dan, well, Max, John, many, many, many friends. Hello, hello everyone, happy Friday. So today, uh, today I want to talk and show you a little bit uh, of uh, how to tweak a shot. Sometimes it was, well, actually it's happening uh, almost on the, like um, several times per month or maybe even uh, more often uh, when student take a course. Let's say you have some training, you have some tutorial where uh, you see that instructor is doing something and uh, you're trying to, well, you get in the same lighting setup, trying to repeat it, and it's not working for you. Uh, on the video, on the tutorial, you see that it works, and when you do the same, you think you do the same, but it didn't work. And uh, you're basically having such a frustration, right, because uh, well, you, you, you do your best and it's not working. So, uh, there is an actual uh, Moxie. Yes, yes. Hi, Moxie. Exactly. Uh, there is a question. Was a question posted uh, by Moxie, one of our uh, students uh, on 40G. Let me show you what is going on. And Moxie, I'm going to uh, do it right now in front of uh, you guys uh, just to show you how I would approach this, okay? So, uh, the question is this. There is a glass, okay? Martini glass. And we have a course, uh, it's uh, uh, Studio Photography Essentials, where I show all kind of uh, ways to shoot glass, besides many other things, like uh, things on the white background or on the... Uh, black background, you know, all kind of things, basically essentials, essentials. When you kind of learn it, it's way easier for you to do the rest. And uh, that shot was one of the shots on the uh, course, and uh, Moxie had an issue with getting the right reflections, okay, on that uh, martini glass where we supposedly to have uh, some outlines on a black background. Of course, we can always add some spot behind it, but first we need to get nice outline, okay? And uh, I'm going to uh, show it right now to you, okay? I have a setup. Let me switch back. I have setup and, uh, you know, let me do uh, one little tweak over here. I'll show you uh, what is going on. Okay, and this would be three. So, the thing that I have is same martini glass, even though it may be not exactly the same, but a very similar martini glass on black plexiglass and some soft boxes, strip boxes, basically. Uh, I also can show you how it looks like uh, from the top, so you see uh, a little bit more of, uh, you know, perspective, the distances between some boxes and all this stuff, okay? The idea is to create an outline, right? To create an outline and uh, oh, we need to use uh, strip boxes, something relatively narrow, okay? And uh, let's start shooting. Uh, and I want to switch to the mode where we have where we have mm. 
the how you call it no not this one not this one let me switch I want to get this one okay yep so what you see here is the camera you see the tethered uh, the camera connected to a computer uh, this is this screen on top, and on the bottom you see a live view from the camera, okay? This is live view. And uh, we're going to uh, play with the light just to see how to create uh, those, uh, the, well, the picture. Uh, so questions is uh, Facebook page, one second, guys. This is Facebook page uh, where everything happens, okay? Uh, I just post it on social media. Basically, if you search uh, Facebook for 40G, you will find the page and you will find a group. group, group. And uh, all the discussions happening on the Facebook group. Uh, it's quite, uh, well, it's it's easy place to, to commu communicate. Okay. And, uh, yes, awesome. So I'll be watching the chat. I'll be monitoring, uh, but hopefully everything is fine and... Uh, We'll good to go. Let me raise this guy a little bit so you see a little bit of what is going on. And uh, I'm starting the machines, our strobes. It will be quite noisy. So we have three strip boxes, one, two, and third on top. Let me start from just one on top. Okay, one by one, it will be easier for you to see uh, what is going on. So I turn it off all this and I have only one. Okay, one strip box that we're going to place somewhere on top of our glass. You know, guys, you know why we are using strip box, right? Because it's narrow. It's like a soft box, but it's narrow and it's easy to create uh, edge lines with it. Okay? So uh, you see, do you see? Yeah, you see already, uh, it's probably too much light here in the studio, but uh, in any case, you see uh, what is going on. Okay, let me set the focus to make sure that all looks good. Okay, and uh, this is the reflection on the glass. And uh, this is something that uh, Moxie was getting, the reflection from top that uh, it's not an age, it's not even close to the age. Uh, let's try to do this. And if you take a picture, well, it will be what you see, right? It will be the reflection that you see on the live view. Uh, let it uh, come to the... Uh, is it coming? No, it's not coming. So let me reconnect. Let me reconnect the camera and do the shot again okay now it's there awesome let's see will you see me like this yes same thing basically <laughs> same lighting setup uh, this is top view right and uh, now, how do I tweak it? How, uh, what do I do? The idea is to find where we can have only edge light, okay? Uh, only edge light. Uh, let me turn off a little bit uh, lighting on the studio so it will be a little bit easier. Uh, let me make sure that it's maximum. Okay, model light is on the maximum. I hope I can see, because it's for me, it's really, really hard to see the uh, live view on, because I'm giving it to you. <laughs> It's not on the large screen. But anyway, let's move this. See what is going on. Okay, okay, this is gets more interesting. You see what is going on when I move it away? Uh, let me turn, you see the top. Okay, so what is going on is that I'm moving this light and you can see on the live view what is happening. And guys, what happens is the law of reflection works, right? You understand that 
the probably internal, not external, but internal uh, surface of our glass reflects this and sends light to the camera, to the sensor. So the reflection goes like this, okay? And you see that we can relatively easy, we can get a relatively nice edge on the sides of our glass, right? Let's see. Yeah, it's quite sort of little double, but it's kind of nice, right? It's getting there. But you see, there is only one line on top. Only one light, uh, line on top. We need to have two, so it's like nice oval. By the way, when we shoot it, Moxie, I forgot how it's on your image. I need to check it out. But make sure that your camera is not leveled with the top of the glass. We need to see the oval, we need to see opening. It should be either a little bit lower or a little bit higher. Okay, you understand what I'm talking about, right? It should not be like this. Okay, it shouldn't be like this. I don't like this. When both, I mean, when we didn't see opening basically, right? It's one line instead of two. So uh, in my case, I'm gonna move it a little bit lower. Okay, uh, to keep the same oval. And now I want to find the area where we will have reflection on both, on both. Let me see if it's there. No, it's not there. I'm checking the live view. It's really hard to see for me. So what I'm doing, I'm moving it even, I don't know, let's say I have no idea where it is. So I just move it even more. Let's see. Okay, you see what's start getting? You see what is going on? At some point, when I move that strip box just l really far away, we start getting the oval. So from this, we went to this. You see the opening? Okay. And you see how far away, you just seen it on top, right? You've seen how far away, it's about one, two, two feet away behind the subject that we have the strip box, and it's actually very low. So it's really crazy, but we're getting what we wanted to see. We can always uh, make a little bit more power to get a little bit more on the sides, or I mean, sides of the glass, or maybe move it a little bit so we can have both. Like I said, it's really hard for me because I don't see what is going on. I suppose to see on the large TV, I need to see the live view. And it helps a lot, but I'll be doing it for you, jumping like a monkey. Sometimes it's just inches, inches, because what happens there is a very particular area that we need to catch the reflection on. Like, for example, I just did, well, it's here. <laughs> I just did a little movement. I moved it like a few inches, and we lost part of that oval on top, right? So the positioning of the lighting is basically the tweak in it. You need to find that position where you need to see, where you see the reflection that you want to see. And it may be really counter, counterintuitive for you, just because you can't really calculate where it's supposed to be using the lower reflection because of the shape of your subject. So what you do, you just move your light all around the studio to find that place, okay? Uh, hi, Navaj, new, okay. Hey, hey, cool. Okay, so uh, let me see if uh, I fixed or not that top, yes, almost fixed. You see, there is a little bit. Again, we can fix it in Photoshop probably, but maybe we can move the light a little bit towards. Let's see if we move it a little bit towards. Basically, it will make this surface a little bit more visible, a little bit thicker, okay? Again, see what happens. I just uh, kind of rotated the strip box 
a little bit, and it immediately gives us way thicker reflections, right? Again, tweaking. If you understand how it works, you can understand how to, let's say, make your strip box to appear uh, thicker, larger, wider. How to do it? If it's there, you move it a little bit towards the subject and boom, the subject sees it like something wider, okay? Because it was just a really tiny line because we moved it really away. I hope you understand what I'm, what I'm talking about. It's all about mastering the light and uh, you know, that lower reflection. So maybe a little bit, let's see if I move it a little bit closer. And we have one more actually uh, way to adjust it. Go up and down. If I move it a little bit higher, so you can move it back and forth and you can move it up and down. It again will change the picture but in our case, uh, it didn't really help. It made things worse because, yeah, we lost the reflection. Again, you've seen how I moved it. It's about, I don't know, five inches. Five inches up and boom, picture is completely different. So I'm moving it a few inches down. Okay, let's see what will happen. And then I can move it a few inches closer to the subject. Nope, we're not getting it. So a few inches away. Okay, so I kind of did it twice. <laughs> uh, before we again got almost perfect circle around. It looks like we need to move it a little bit more away. Just a little bit. Okay, it looks good on the little screen. Okay, so now what about edges on the steam on the leg? Now let me see, make sure that. Okay, yes, down, up, up and down, further, closer, and we found uh, this, the place, right? Now we need to turn on, let's turn on these two guys. Two strip boxes, same two strip boxes on, on the sides. Okay, same distance. Let's kind of move it relatively same distance and see what will happen. Uh, see how it's from top. Uh, this is. This is from top, okay? This is how it looks like. This is the distance. About feet and a half, feet and a half, two feet, maybe two and a half feet away. Okay? And uh, what do we see here? It doesn't look nice. It looks sort of, but... And again, it should be clean. You see, my, my glass is not clean. So how we can tweak, how we can make it... Uh, to look a little bit better for us. We can find, let's say, because of the shape, uh, now I want to kind of tell you that you really need to, you can do a lot uh, by understanding how things work. Look at the shape of the glass, martini glass. It's like this, right? So the surface is, is under about 40 degree, and then it's vertical. Vertical, it's a steam, it, it's cylindrical, so it reflects what on the sides. But this thing, it reflects things on the side, but not the same way as the vertical lines, right? What, what I'm talking about, this is not a good idea to touch it, but for the educational purposes, it's good. When you master your light when you kind of trying to see, well, you, you do the same, because this is how I did it uh, on the course, and it didn't work for, uh, for the student, because, uh, for our student, because she didn't find her own position, because it's different glass for her, it's different light, and it's different shape of soft boxes, and you've seen how few inches can make a difference, and imagine if you're using different soft boxes. 
just different, uh, well, different lens, because it's different focal length, it will be different picture again, different reflection if you would use uh, like 50 millimeters, for example, instead of 90. So it's very important to calculate first things in your head and understand how to create lighting. Uh, yes, it's Capture One, guys. It's uh, Capture One that I use for tetrad shooting. So this will reflect all this area from probably it's from here to here. This direct reflection from anything that we have here will be coming to the camera. This reflects, yeah, it reflects everything from top because it will hit here and somehow it will be reflected to the camera. But what we see on the sides is limited by the distance because at some point this angle won't reflect things that really on the side. It's probably, you can see, if you look at the lower reflection, it probably will pick up reflection from things being somewhere here. But if you move them a little bit away, for example, you may not catch a reflection at all on this area, but only here. This is the difference. This is why you can uh, create separate lighting for the top and for the bottom. Let's, let's try to do this. Talking too much, I know. Does it make any sense? Do you understand what I'm trying to show you? Hope so. Ah, by the way, before I uh, jump to modifying this. Guys, today, uh, today is the last day, uh, the last day of sale for jewelry workshop. Jewelry workshop will be October 6th. It will be three hours workshop where I'll be doing things in real time and you watch it and uh, chat, same thing basically. Uh, but it will be recording provided to you and uh, it will be some bonus after that. And today is the last day when you can save 35% because it's early bird price, the last day. Uh, original price $145, but today you can sign up the last day when you can sign up for 95 And I don't know, did you see it or not? Uh, let me show you. Uh, this is a little bit about it. So, let's jump to, to our shooting. I just posted a link uh, to the workshop. If you thinking to learn jewelry photography, this is probably the best opportunity for you because it's not expensive. I'll be showing polarized light. It's very uh, interesting topic, but you know, even with polarized light, you need to learn how to shoot the jewelry, the damn jewelry that you know, reflects everything. I'll show it to you, okay? You can use the same techniques even without polarized light, without the special, you know, films and everything. Just understand what will be going on, right? It's real time jewelry workshop. Okay, so, uh, get back to this. We see the reflection. Uh, this is what I'm talking about. If you move this light close enough, okay, if you move it close enough, uh, see what will be happening all sorts of reflections uh, will be coming. This is where, you know, when we just closed the gap, we moved uh, three boxes closer to the subject, they start appearing on the top, right? This is what I was telling you. There is a distance where they start appearing. On the other hand, if you, if you move it away, let's say we move it away, this one, well, it will be changing. However, think about it, it may be uh, different sides. Okay, you see uh, between this and this, I moved things on the left and it changed things on the right. 
okay, talking about this side. It's okay, uh, it just happening because of the reflection. Whatever it comes, the left side reflects right light source and the uh, right side reflects left right source, okay? What is going on here? Okay, it's good. So, let's take away this one, just turn it off for a moment. Let's play with one, uh, with only one, with this light. And let me see if I can really see actually what is going on on the, on the live view. Okay. So see what happening if we move it, for example, here. Okay. Getting really, really thick reflection somewhere here because it's picking up. What if we move it here and then if you want to reduce some flare, if you want to reduce things, we can do the rotation. Because you remember, you can go up and down, right? You can go up and down with your light. You can go back and forth. You can go deep or, I mean, further to background or closer to the subject. And also, you can rotate your light. By changing the rotation, what you change, what, what happens? You're changing the width of this strip box. If it's like that width, if it's facing the subject, it sees it completely that wide. But if you move it, the subject will start seeing the narrower and narrower and narrower line of uh, light, basically, right? This is what happens, and this is important to understand. Let's say if we move our strip box like this, Okay, we still see a little bit of spills here and there, right? But it gets better and better. And uh, I don't know how I can possibly do this without looking at the live view. Uh, you guys see it, I don't see it. But I'll try, I'll try, I'll try to do my best. Okay. So you see how much it changes, right? From this to this, smaller and smaller. And this is how you control the reflections. You can make them thicker, you can make them thinner. And so far, so far, we don't have any double lines. This is what I've seen many times uh, when uh, students were doing things. Double reflection, like left and right. Let's see, maybe it will happen that double reflection when we add another light over here, right? I'll try to do it symmetrically, okay? Uh, I'm not sure if it will be symmetrical, but why not? Maybe it will be at some point. Probably not symmetrical. And it can explain many things. Okay. So this is what happens. You know, let's try to do this. Let's try to do the real stuff. Here we go. This is how I actually walk, usually walk. Uh, only modeling light at the studio. And uh, I need to see. The live view. And let's move it, for example, over here. <laughs> the worst thing 
Uh, you know, guys, the worst thing is to uh, completely highlight it. So what I did, I move it here. And then I try to, uh, let's say, lead it by pushing the light towards the subject. It may look okay, but uh, keep in mind that when you do things like this, for example, right, it's not bad, it's interesting. What may happen? First, you're spilling a lot on the background. Second thing, with the light coming, lots of light coming through the glass, uh, you may have uh, to see lots of reflections. And uh, I mean, from dust, from uh, imperfections from glass, and it's not good. When you have light more on the sides, it's more limited. When you have light coming through the glass, let's say you shooting a little bit from behind, same thing happen again. You're highlighting all the dust and uh, everything. Okay, so Moxie, do you see what is going on? Do you see uh, how we tweak it? How we get in? Uh, that picture that I was showing on the course. I hope you're still here, uh, so let me know. I was trying to show you different ways to do it, but same principle. You understand what each light does. For example, if I turn off uh, the top light and shoot it without, okay, you, you can clearly see what is going on, what kind of uh, reflection we're getting only from uh, strip boxes that on the sides. And our ideal light is when, let's say, side soap boxes will be highlighting only the bottom part, only the leg of, the, uh, of our glass. And top will be highlighting only the glass itself, the jar, I would say, okay? So here you can uh, see and play, move it all around, just to get, for example, this is not a good move. You see what happened, right? It's immediately, well, it's here. <laughs> Highlighted some, something on the top. We need to minimize it, okay? We need to minimize it. And let's say if you move it like this, what will happen? So every move change something. We can see how I changed the reflection on, on the steam, right? From being a little bit apart, for being like this, and then narrower, if needed. And again, this is up to you. You just need to understand what is going on. Okay? Yes, I know, I know, <laughs> Prokofiev. You can do this, yes. That's one of the things, when you place large salt box behind, uh, cover it with the uh, with the black screen, so you understand. When you place large soft box here, that big, you cover part that gets into the camera, basically you're seen with a black screen, and then you have nice light all around. It works great, however, on this lesson I don't want to show you, you know, Okay, let's put it this way. When you shoot, when you shoot with the light, uh, one large shot box and the screen in, in the middle, you have almost uh, zero, well, very little, very little room for adjustments. You cannot move those lights, you cannot do anything. Sometimes it will work, but sometimes it won't work because of the shape of your subject. And well, if you have one shot box, it's great. If you have only one, it's probably a good thing. So uh, thank you for uh, kind of reminding me about this. However, this, this is a great thing to learn how to control everything, how to control the size, the shape, uh, the appearance of the reflection. When you, move multiple, when you use multiple lights and when you, for example, I moved some boxes here, we have very narrow reflection on the uh, steam. I moved some boxes here and probably it will be larger because the lower reflection will be getting more reflection on the edges of our uh, of our glass, right? And then we turn on uh, the top one, and we may be getting a nice picture. Well, there is a spill, but uh, what I was showing you, 
I was showing you the difference between reflection on here, right, and reflection on here. How to control it? You need to understand how to control it. This is my task as an instructor to show you, you know, how to do it, how to get H, how to get this. Okay. Okay, Moxie, thank you. Uh, now let's uh, let's jump back to our why it's not jumping back. It should be jumping back uh, because it's not active, I guess. Okay. So now uh, I'm ready to answer your questions. Okay. I'm. Uh, Maybe I can summarize what I was just showing to you. Product photography can be very easy or can be very complicated. Depends on how you can, uh, well, how you understand that love of reflection, how you understand it in real, on practice. You can learn it, you know, 100 times in a school, but it, it won't help you much. And uh, why I always say use multiple light sources, uh, use instead of, let's say, box, you know, the shooting box, use just similar shooting box, but, but when you have uh, separate panels. I want you to understand that when you move things, it changes the appearance, right? And uh, more and more you have room of, uh, you know, for improvisation, for uh, changing the distance, changing the, well, all kind of parameters of the light that you use, you will be understanding more and more. It's like, you know, learning every time and then it will be way, way easier when client, because, you know, commercial photography, it's not like you, you choose what to shoot. You shoot what they bring it to you. And it's not like in portraiture or uh, fashion or it's subject all the same there. It's more about you know, how to prop it and, you know, different things. But for product, they may bring you something that you never seen before, <laughs> some crazy thing, and, and uh, you need to shoot it. And you have limited time to shoot it in the studio, right? And uh, understanding how to manipulate, how to, uh, well, get what you need is, is, is crucial, I mean, because it's very time limited usually. Uh, in many cases you cannot play with the subject before because it will be brought to your studio only on the shooting time. So this is why we have all the courses that were basically repeating all the same but in different uh, subjects, different situations. Master the, the light, master that reflection, law of reflection and law of refraction. Here it was a little bit more complex because it's reflection plus refraction. Glass, I mean, light comes through the glass. That's why one strip box on the side was highlighting both sides, basically. Okay. Can we do with the speed lights? Uh, R cup pain asking. Well, of course. The light itself has no impact. I mean, the, the type of light, I always kind of saying it. Type of light has no effect at all. And, uh, you know, uh, let me... Let me show you something over here. Okay, that's not what's supposed to happen, but it's good. So what I'm telling you is this. Uh, well, this is what happened, uh, was happening uh, for Moxie, right? You understand? And uh, with speed lights, I don't know, let me do this, let me, oh nice, chat, I'm gonna pop up chat, so I continue here guys. <laughs> Shoot me your questions if you have, okay, and we'll be go from there. So uh, Arca. There, is, there are some boxes that can be mounted on a speed light, exactly the same way. 
and uh, we have the, them on, again, I repeat it again and again, but uh, why not, on uh, this course, the starting studio photography. All this was shoot with speed lights, $60 speed lights, uh, with $70 softbox on it, okay? This is all the images. And it's very inexpensive course, and I think this is the best course to start in product photography, okay? Uh, all these images, you know, ages, all this, just the speed lights. So let's shoot. If you have any questions, uh, shoot. Uh, otherwise, subscribe to 40G channel, and see you next Friday. We have a very interesting uh, request, actually, guys. We have an interesting request on the 40G Facebook group uh, where uh, when I asked, like, hey, what do you want to uh, learn? And it was about, for example, uh, glasses, glass photography, when the glasses, you know, the sun, sunglasses, are completely like a mirror, shiny, and uh, we need to show the shyness. Uh, but, you know, this is very... Um, very specific topic, and it's good to do some sort of the course. I'm not sure if it will be interesting for all the 45,000 subscribers on YouTube. This is I always trying to show you know a more wide uh, wide use techniques here, like this one, for example. What I showed you in this lesson is great when you working with ages, when you need to get nice. Uh, Contours, if you want. Okay. Yes, product problem solving. So let's see <clears throat> uh, what was happening on Facebook group while I was thinking about your questions. Cool stuff, Alexander. Yeah. Nice. Love it. Really nice. <laughs> Alexander, yeah. No critic for it because it's so good. Yeah, our splashes and this, for example. Nice. On this one, um, I can critic a little bit. Okay. I can critic uh, a little bit. This one is good. However, reflections. When we show, when we show, whoa. something shiny. I think this should be a little bit more brighter. And this probably should be a little bit more brighter. And uh, this side, when you see the light coming through, it doesn't look really sexy because of the, well, I don't know what's happening, but uh, something on the glass. It's not good. It's supposed to be clear. Maybe even real glass is not clear. It has scratches, but you need to fix it as a photographer and basically more contrast. It looks cool, it's it's nice image, but it should be more contrast, it should be more attention to on the subject, because right now it's a little bit uh, not poppy enough, okay? Uh, yeah, this is one of the beautiful work on uh, Pro Club. By the way, guys, about jewelry. Did you see what we start doing on Pro Club? Uh, the assignment that we have there, it's all about jewelry photography, this one. And you still have time to join Pro Club, uh, take a lesson, watch it, and do your own shots to get something like this, or like that, or like that. Well, all kind of different uh, things. By the way, this is out of the camera images. No post-production, only on one was post-production. And in uh, actually in one week already, I'll be reviewing it so you can get uh, feedback from uh, you know how to improve it. Uh, again, I'm going to click the link over here. Okay, uh, this is from one of the assignments that we had. What else? <laughs> so many questions, Mark. Mark is asking many questions. So I wish I had time for all this. I mean, to answer it, uh, but well, it's all in the courses anyway. So, let's see. Any other questions you may have? Uh, 
Prokofiev is saying that uh, maybe, but he's not sure if he will move uh, big softbox behind when he was talking about that way to put large softbox and then the screen behind it, black screen. Uh, you can do, you can do many things. You can move uh, that screen and actually you can change the uh, size of the, your light basically, right? Your uh, gaps that are, high, that are light. Uh, it's still, you know, you know uh, <laughs> Prokofiev, Tvarish <laughs> Prokofiev. This is a great way that you suggested, you know, that uh, putting large soft box in the screen behind. It's a great way to shoot it. But you won't learn as much as you would learn if you would use this. Okay? It's, this is what's going on here. It's more about learning. And then you can always simplify it. You can say, hey, why I need this? I can just throw it away and use just one light source. Yes. But the idea to show you, you know, most of the, well, to, to push you to learn more, <laughs> okay? Is there an assignment for a year? <laughs> assignment for a year? No, we don't have assignment for a year. It will be, uh, it will be a certification program, actually based on for pro club uh, photographers. Uh, if a uh, photographer took and uh, successfully completed uh, some number of, good number of assignments, different assignments we'll have, uh, then uh, we'll certify him or her and uh, put as an associate on 40G as a photographer who can uh, be referred by 40G project as a product photographer, as a certified product photographer that we can uh, say to the client, hey, yes, this photographer will be capable of doing whatever is, you know, can pop up. So it's sort of uh, assurance program. It will be a cool thing. Maybe it will be some assignment during that certification, you know, something really huge to do. Who knows? But it's still under, under development. Uh, is it a show every Friday? Uh, yes, uh, this is show every Friday. Okay, let me get back to, uh, to this. It happens every Friday, 1 p.m. Pacific time, unless we have some issues like today. We started 1.15 or almost 1.20. Uh, but yes, it's every Friday. If you subscribe to 40G channel, uh, you will get notification when we go live because this is sort of um, YouTube official way to stream live. It's not like I'm embedding this. You see, it's just you go to uh, YouTube slash C slash 40G slash live Boom, and it's there, okay? Is it later available on YouTube? I can watch the archives. Yes, it's later. Uh, it's available on YouTube. Uh, you can watch archives on YouTube. Uh, it's under uh, video, experts video blog. It's a playlist. But we also, if you go to, uh, let me give it a link to you. If you go to 40 expert video blog, what is going on? Why well, I can open it? It's crazy. <laughs> okay, here it is. Uh, there is a page where we have all this on on uh, 40G. So all the lessons, I mean, all the Friday talks are there. Okay, how many it should be, and what are these? Uh, sorry, uh, Arca plan. I am not sure what you're asking. What? What? How many? You talking about uh, certification? Uh, it will be at least 10, I think, more than 10 assignments completed. So we will think, I mean, it's not ready yet. It's not ready. It's under development. We're still kind of putting things uh, together. Uh, but uh, yeah, this is a big change that coming next year, well, maybe by the end of this year, uh, we'll be adding associates, certified photographers, because we you know when uh, people look for product photographer online, at some point, they will, get back, uh, they will get to 40G because we have so many keywords. We have uh, so many things about product photography, all different topics. So whatever they search, they come to because, well, I receive like every week, a couple times per week, uh, some requests for, you know, catalog shooting here and there all around the world. If I can, I pass it to photographers that they will know, but it's sort of now, I mean, we need to make it official, you know. I would like a lesson of focus stacking with jewelry, with focus lens and uh, with uh, rail focus. Have you one lesson of that? 
uh, Maxi asking, we have a lesson on focus stacking from Vadim Schilling, if I, if I'm not mistaken, and I think it's completely free lesson. Again, it's on 40G video blog. Let me see. Uh, sharp images introduction to focus stacking. Yes, yes, we have it. It's the uh, same link that I posted. If you scroll down, you will find uh, at least two tutorials about focus stacking. It may be not covering the ho all the topics, but Vadim shows you the best way of to do it, and uh, it's completely free, so you can you can watch it. Uh, it's uh, it's called uh, Ultimate Sharp Images in you for in your photography, first part and second part. Okay. Спасибо, спасибо. Thank you, Prokofiev, uh, for the, uh, yeah. Uh, how many years? Four years, five years we're doing this. That's a cool thing. Okay, lessons. Sorry, Arka, plan, I, I mean, you mean lessons? Lessons, we have many lessons. We have hundreds of them. <laughs> what kind of lessons? Okay. Hey Dave, yep. I think we we done, guys. It's uh, it was one hour. It was a pleasure talking to you. Like I said, don't forget about webinar today, last day uh, when you can join Jewelry online. Well, it's workshop. I call it workshop because you will see from different uh, cameras, similar uh, way you will see it through uh, live view. You will see jewelry photography in in reality and what i'll be doing uh, because we'll be using polarized light polarized filters uh, my light modifiers the way that they're gonna shoot jewelry it will be super simple super super easy it will be very well simple in terms of uh, the equipment that you need of course it's not simple when you have not much ideas of how to do it but the requirements for the gear is very simple Many do-it-yourself stuff, you know, things like. Okay. Okay, okay, we have, we have a question coming. Hello from uh, Munich, Germany. How long does uh, ring shot with shiny surface brilliant or encore gemstone in center take? Sorry, sorry. Uh, Chris from Munich. I, I'm not sure what they're asking. How long? Does the ring shot with shiny surface brilliance take? I mean, uh, the shot itself, or the lesson, or what, what, you, what you're referring to? Sorry. Yep. Thanks from Brazil. Thanks from California. Tamer, Tamer, Tamer. Yes, not our complaint. Okay. Tamer. Tamer or Tamer? Timer. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you, Moxie. I'm glad, glad it worked. Uh, we're going to attach this to the uh, to the course. Attach this uh, webinar, so it may help others. Already. Uh, love you guys. This is Friday, so happy weekend. Uh, have fun, and uh, see you next Friday, 1 p.m. Pacific time right here on 40G channel. Uh, when you subscribe, it's even better. Or share this video. If you share this video, big thank you to you. Okay? Awesome. Thank you. And do something crazy this weekend. Better with your camera. <laughs> okay. Bye. Bye.